Just finished practice this morning. Guys, coaches are up watching and, and looking at the film. We've transitioned over a little bit uh, this week to doing some nickel state work. Uh, we're still doing uh, quite a bit of K-State, K-State, and uh, battling the ones against the ones, uh, just limiting that a little bit more and then spending some uh, more quality time with some scout team work, uh, getting our preparation uh, continuing on for Nickel State. The guys have been working really hard um, and pleased with where we are at. We still have a lot of work to do, but we still have well, probably about 10 days or about eight practices to get this all all ironed out and ready to go so that we can put our best foot forward um, on August 31st. And I know the guys are excited about uh, uh, getting a chance to play, but uh, more importantly, they know that uh, we have to continue to attack each day and continue to progress on a daily basis so that uh, uh, we are ready to play because we still have some work to do uh, all areas, offense, defense, and teams. And uh, I'm pleased that our leadership, we've got a bunch of uh, exceptional seniors and juniors that are doing a really good job of challenging the guys on a daily basis um, to give more and to be their best. And uh, for us to be where we want to be, we have to continue to improve on a daily basis. So today was a great practice. I thought the guys had great energy and focus. And now the challenge is to stack another good one on there tomorrow. So uh, open up for questions. Well, I, the guys are excited to go out and compete and, and play every day. I've been really, uh, really happy with the effort uh, on a daily basis to come out there and 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 continue to try to improve. They they know that they're learning something from our schemes every day. They're learning something um, from a coach from a coach every day on how to do a technique or um, you know it's all new to them. That's the thing that I I've enjoyed. It's all new to them, so they're they're really sponges. They want to continue to improve and get better, and and they know that we're barely scratching the surface of what we're doing offensively and defensively. And for us to stay on that trajectory, um, to be where we want to be, we have to continue each day to get better. And, and they're excited to improve every day. What, what are one or two things specifically that you're most impressed with right now? And what are maybe one or two biggest concerns? Well, the one or two big, biggest concerns are us detailing things every day. I think broad, broad perspective, understanding offense and defensive schemes, uh, I think we're doing a great job, and that's a positive. Uh, but we have to continue to detail our work, detail a, a, an alignment, an assignment, detail a footwork, a hand placement, whatever it may be. Um, that's where we still uh, have to continue to, to try to push each other to be better because, uh, uh, once again, I, I like where we're at, but now it's just detailing, whether it's a, a specific play, whether it's a technique, um, in that, not just offensively and defensively, but special teams as well. And, and so um, we're, we're by, by no means ready to go, but um, I, I like the enthusiasm and, and how eager the guys are to learn. Coach, can you give us an injury update on Adam Harder? Yeah, Adam's going to be lost for the season. He had a knee injury a couple weeks ago. We re he, it was his first day back. He'd had uh, some hamstring a little bit uh, issues um, throughout the summer. and. Uh, unfortunately for Adam, he was injured, um, kind of a non-contact deal in, in practice, and he'll he'll miss the season. And still, we're trying to figure out where that will be as far as getting this fifth year or getting his senior year back. I guess who else would now would be looking at a fullback, and how does just that hit? And then Nick Leonard is only being fresh coming back to tight end, kind of impact everything. Well, it it does, but at least we have the time to figure it all out. I mean, everybody that's a tight end is also a fullback, from from Lenners to Logan Long to to Blaze to Sammy to uh, Luke Soa. Um, you know, we're we're throwing Jack Stanine in the mix as well. I mean, there there's so many bodies back there that now Coach Mess is just, you know, we have the time. The the it's unfortunate that that Adam was injured, uh, but. You know, it's not like it's happened two days before a game. So we have a number of guys that we'll keep rotating through. There's not going to be a set, boy, you're the only thing you are as a tight end and the only thing you are uh, is, is a fullback. We have to continue to push the guys and see how much they can, they can absorb and understand uh, to play multiple spots. And so it'll be a revolving door there. But a lot of guys are going to play too. Say that again, I'm sorry. 
Oh, I'm learning stuff every every day, you know, um, whether it's about our team, that's the main thing, because I'm still getting to know these guys. Uh, uh, and every day I think I learn a little bit more. I think all of our coaches learn a little bit more about these guys, uh, of their skill set especially, of uh, the things that we need to do to put them in positions to be successful. But uh, once again, we're, we as a staff are really pleased with the, the effort, the energy, the guys are, are busting their tail to try to learn what we're doing. Um, he's got a lower leg injury. I think Fletch will probably miss maybe two more weeks as we're hopeful. You know, so is he going to miss the first game? I would, I would say he would. Uh, the second game, I think there's potentially he could be back. I, I think it's one of those things we're going to evaluate him again uh, probably between week one and week two. You know we're rotating. We're rotating three guys right now. Um, in there a lot: Eli, uh, DeQuan, and uh, Daniel Green. Those are the three guys that are rotating. Uh, Nick Allen's in that rotation uh, as well. We're just we're pushing those top three guys uh, to to learn multiple positions. You know Eli's playing both positions. Daniel Green's um, focusing more on Mike and and Eli's or excuse me, um, DeQuan's focusing more on Will Backer, and Nick can play both spots as well. So uh, we're fortunate that uh, we're not losing Cody for very long, and it's, 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 a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, so we need to be smart with him. Um, and then we can still swing Aaron, Eric Gallen back and forth between linebacker and defensive end. So um, we're probably a little bit more thin on special teams just because Fletch uh, was a starter on all four teams, and so we're trying to even, even out and divvy up those reps on special teams. I feel really good. We're doing a really good job. You know, we, we have Stanton Weber that's a quality control coach for us, and, and obviously Sean's still helping us with, with quality control. So uh, those guys using their expertise um, to the coaches that are responsible for each unit has been really productive. Um, I feel really good where we're at in special teams, especially where we started uh, in the 1st of August. Uh, to where we're at now, we've made really good strides and really good leaps. I, I'm really pleased. Devin Ankle is a phenomenal punter, uh, and uh, Devin, I look forward to having an All-American type season. Uh, Blake Lynch is doing a great job kicking field goals and uh, has a lot of confidence. We're rotating two snappers. Um, Wes and Randon are both snapping. Uh, we'll continue. I think those two competing against each other has helped um, raise both their levels of play up. Uh, I, I like Philip Brooks as a punt returner, kick returner. Jordan Brown can do both. Malik Knowles can do both. So we, we have enough depth there. We're just continuing to find uh, more depth as far as just across the board on, on the punt guys, the, 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 the cover guys on kickoff. We're, we're continuing to move guys around so that we can find more talent, more depth. And that's where you may see some younger players, whether they're redshirt freshmen or freshmen, get an opportunity on special teams. Um, and, and we don't have a depth chart yet on, on all those teams. We're, we're getting closer, but we're working a lot of guys in both, both units. And you touched on the returners a little bit there, but your, your general philosophy for returners, I mean, are you looking strictly skill players and running backs, receivers, that type of thing? Would you look at corners, uh, backs? Yeah, that? yep, we'd look at all of them. You know, Walt can do it. Uh, A.J. Parker can do it as well, um, you know, but uh, – uh, we may try a couple of different guys back there. I know Phil's done it before, and I feel confident uh, with him. And, and so, uh, but no, it's it's always needing to create depth on on the return game, and, and so we use all the skill guys. Coach, can you take me back and tell me why it was so important for you to hire Colin to the staff? And are there any ways you maybe either leaned on him or looked to him for advice, given his knowledge going back to his program? Well, he knows the program exceptionally well, and, and he knows what it takes to be a. a K-State Wildcat and, and uh, the pride that he has in being a, a former player here, I think is, uh, you know, everybody sees that. Uh, all, the, all the guys that are, that are new coaches-wise, they, they see what, what Colin brings. And there's, there's just not a better person than Colin Klein. Uh, I have so much respect for him, not only as a, as a quarterback's coach, 
but as a man, and, and uh, I love sitting in on some of the quarterback meetings because I like the way he details everything for those quarterbacks. And, you know, he's coaching them on the big picture, but then he's, he's pulling it down and, and really hitting the details, whether it's mechanics, whether it's, it's coverages, whether it's footwork. I just, uh, him being a part of the staff has is, is made, I think, all of us uh, coaches that are new um, made it a lot easier on us because we can ask him, hey, what was it? You know, what, what are some of the things? Uh, or last year, as far as personnel-wise, you know, I'm not worried about schemes. I'm more worried about looking at personnel, guys that have played a little bit, guys that were in the mix on game plans and stuff. And so, um, yeah, Colin's done a phenomenal job and really excited that he's on our staff. Coach, I understand that, I mean, uh, that it's still a process of learning and looking at offense in particular. What has pleased you most with the execution to this point? Uh, the fact that Skyler is really running the show uh, and, and feels more and more comfortable on a daily basis of getting, getting us in and out of the right situation, um, changing a play at the line of scrimmage, uh, communication that, that he has with the tight ends, receivers, uh, if we have to check something at the line of scrimmage. Uh, really pleased with the, all of those senior offensive linemen. They've really stepped up, and I think we're, we're, we're really playing as one on the offensive line, and I think that's critical. And when you have five seniors that uh, are in the mix uh, playing on the offensive line, and whether they've played a lot together or you throw Evan Curl that hasn't played as much, Evan's really stepped up his game, and I've been really pleased to watch Evan um, uh, join that group of guys that uh, are, are playing really well. Uh, for us to be successful on the offensive uh, for on offense, it's going to start with those offensive linemen and, and Skyler. Those those six guys have to play really well. Um, and, and we can't put everything on Skyler's shoulders, and we need to spread some of that leadership out among the offensive linemen. And I've been pleased with, with Scott and with Tyler and with Adam of taking some of that leadership on, leadership role on, and, and kind of alleviated some of that from Skyler. And so uh, offensively, I've been really pleased with where they're at. I've heard a few of your coaches reference not doing conditioning after practices. Would you say you guys are more – new school from a sports science perspective and recovery and all that kind of stuff then as opposed to working through those things and just being tough? Well, I think conditioning is what – there's a different levels of conditioning. Our, our guys, if you'd ask them, they're taking so many reps with the double rep system. I mean, you know, we're, we're averaging over, over 70 to 80 plays of team reps on, on each field. So some of those guys are taking 60 of the 80 plays. And – well, you're, they're playing a full game every time you're out there. They're still conditioning uh, after practice based on, you know, defense has loafs. If they're not running to the football, uh, they're going to condition. Offensively, if they're having turnovers, they're going to condition. Um, but I, I guess if you'd ask the guys the amount of repetitions they're getting, uh, they're playing a full game out there every every practice. And so uh, on the flip side of that, with the double rep system, you got to be smart because – we got to get these guys' legs back too, and, and that's something that we'll do uh, beginning later on this week. We still have a couple of really hard practices ahead of us, but we need to get these guys' legs back. They're they're in great shape. You know, uh, Coach Dawson did a phenomenal job and his staff throughout the summer uh, of getting them in shape to play football. Now I think our staff's done a great job of getting them in football condition to make sure they're ready to play games. Now we've got to start toning some things back because we got to make sure our guys are fresh come August 31st. I know it's going to take, when you took over, you inherited systems that were in place, culture that was in place. Here you kind of started from ground zero. How, how has that been a challenge for you and how has it progressed? No, well, it's been fun because uh, you, you're, you're trying to implement what you believe in and what you know and what you know works into a, uh, a culture where they've already had success and they've had tremendous leadership uh, from Coach Schneider when he was here. And so it's just flipping the switch and just trying to learn the way we do things. Uh, our staff does things. And I've been fortunate because Scotty was a part of our staff at North Dakota State and Mess was there. So you got the leaders on each side of the ball that, that know what we're looking for. Uh, what, when I say we're looking for, all of us as a staff, we're all in this together of what we're looking for from 
how we do things and how we detail things, not only at practice, but more importantly in the walkthroughs and, and in the position meetings and in the unit meetings. Um, that's how you're building this culture and building the cohesiveness amongst the, the units offensively and defensively is, is those leaders, you know, and, and I couldn't be more pleased with what Coach Hazelton and Coach Mess are doing to lead uh, their units. And then on top of that, we have such great assistants that have have tremendous knowledge, tremendous experience, and, and Coach Hayes and Coach Mess are so good about saying, okay, I want to know what your guys' input is. I, I, I want to have your input and um, put your stamp on some things, and, and they're allowing that uh, to happen in those unit meetings. And so um, it, it's, a daily, it's a daily grind, and, it's a, and we're continuing to improve on a daily basis, but uh, uh, I'm so pleased with where we're at with the staff and, and how we've uh, come together and, and start to continue to build the culture. Similar expectations, similar schemes, uh, although different way of going about mm -hmm. it. How's that assisted in this case? Uh, I, I, once again, I don't know all the things that, that had transpired before. Uh, I think offensively, we probably shift trade motion a little bit more than what has been done in the past. Um, but there's some gap scheme, there's some zone scheme, there's, uh, there's some continuity there of things offensively. I think defensively, it's a little bit different. Um, with the things that Coach Hayes uh, and I both believe in and um, the defensive staff, you know, we're, we're more of a Tampa 2 system now as opposed to what they did in the past. You know, we're, 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 in the past it was more quarters based and now it's more um, too deep based and, and more, um, you know, hard corners and stuff and, and it, it's in different blitz packages and things that, that uh, uh, Coach Hayes and I have done throughout the years and, and dating back to when we were at North Dakota State, uh, that's different from what these guys did in the past, you know. And so when you're, when you're a too high defense, you're a too high defense. And they were a too high before and we're still a too high now, but it's just different ways of doing things. And so, and then you take that across the landscape of offense, defense, and special teams, the terminology is just so different. And so that's where we have to make sure and understand that, you know, what was a term last year could mean the same, but it's here's what it's called this year. And that's where we're still working through some things. And the guys have done a phenomenal job of, of learning the terminology and utilizing it so that they're talking Coach Kleinerman's language in the back end of, of safeties rather than what was in the past. And that's always a work in progress. How much has Eli Huggins kind of forced himself into the picture along the defensive line? What's he kind of done to afford himself that opportunity? The way he plays, the way he competes, the way he practices, you know, he, he goes against um, Holtorf and, and Mitch and, and those guys inside and does a great job. And um, we need him to be an effective player for us. And it allows us to have more depth at the defensive line. I'm, I've been really big into rotating defensive linemen and keeping them fresh, you, you know, uh, whether you're playing a 60 play game or you're playing a 90 play game, which we don't want to play, but we may have to at times, you need to have four or five, six defensive tackles being able to rotate in there. And, and Eli's done a, done a phenomenal job of, of adding himself into that mix with a, a bunch of seniors. And then you throw Drew, Drew Wiley in there as well. So um, I, I, I'm still pleased with the depth that we have uh, both of the D tackle and D end spot. Um, I, I'm field space for me. Um, I'm a defensive back guy, and the stadium or any stadium is too small. You, know, you only have 100, 100 yards, and, and so uh, it's just not enough field space. Um, so we've gone over to the grass fields, and we've been able to, to carve out two fields, one about 70 yards and one about 55 or 60 yards. So we're, And then we have an auxiliary area for the D-line, O-line. We kind of shove those guys to the side because they can practice on any patch of grass. So it's allowed us to have the offensive skill guys on one field and the, and the DBs and linebackers on another field to utilize that space um, so that we can do more vertical passing game things and, and work deep ball drills with, with defensive backs. 
Plus, I just think it's easier on your legs, um, and that, that means me as well. It's just easier for coaches uh, to, to be on the grass. Uh, and I think the guys like the, the, the environment change, you know, just to be outside and, and being, um, you know, in, in open air a little bit more, so to speak, with, with the grass fields and you're bouncing around from spot to spot. And uh, I've been really pleased that the fields have held up phenomenally well. For the amount of rain that we've had, we've been forced to come inside, I think only, or come to the, in, inside the stadium only twice. That's pretty, that's pretty remarkable. So hats off to the, to the grounds crew here. They've done a great job. Our fields continue to hold up and we're out there on a daily basis. Tim Dinkles was obviously a pretty good team last year at FCS. How much of an advantage is it coming from the FCS ranks and having some more familiarity? With them? Well, I, I, we're not going to overlook them. I can promise you that. Nichols is a dynamite football team and, and have tremendous respect for their coaching staff and their players. And, and they've given a number of Power 5 teams a run for their money. And I saw them on film last year because uh, they should have beaten Eastern Washington. They were up uh, early on and they don't have a black, block field goal. They're probably advancing on because they had the momentum. Uh, great quarterback, tremendous skill players. Um, and th they had a Big 12 win last year. Uh, Football's not much different, guys. You know, South Dakota came in here last year and probably should have won, and and Kansas State found a way to win. And that's it's, guys understand that if you don't have your A game and you don't play your best football, you're going to get beat. It doesn't matter the level of play. Uh, we're still a ways away, to be honest with you, and that's going to probably continue to th be throughout the fall. Uh, I've been pleased with Nick at times. I've been pleased with John at times. It's the consistency that they both have to, to bring to the table as well as the ability to take care of the football. That's what's going to be determined on who that backup quarterback is, and, and it's a daily uh, evaluation for us. That's why we're still doing a lot of second and third down against uh, good on good, so to speak, or some seven on seven or some team periods so that we still put those guys in the fire against um, some of the, the top line defenders we have so that we can figure out who we feel most comfortable with and that'll, that'll be ongoing. We're not going to name a backup prior to week one. Um, it'll be between Coach Mess, Coach Klein and I as we continue to evaluate on a, on a week to week basis. You know, we're still working through that. I think some of the freshmen have hit a little bit of a wall. Uh, when you're talking, this is the third week of camp. And they've probably played more football in three weeks of camp than some of them have for the last couple of years, especially the, the intensity that we're playing with. So um, we're really pleased with, with all of them. They're still probably 8 to 12 that could help us somewhere along the line. If none of them play in game one, does that mean we won't? play any of them the rest of the season, not at all. Um, there's a few that are probably further along than others just because of, of what's between the ears and understanding what we're doing offensively and defensively. There's a number of them that have the ability to play right now, but mentally haven't maybe caught up to what we're doing schematically that we got to understand that they're just freshmen. It's going to take a little bit more time for those guys to to, to really understand what we, what we need them to do offensively and defensively. So uh, I think weekly we'll sit down as a staff and say, here's the guys that we're going to earmark to maybe help us out, whether it's on teams or offense and defense. Just that and continuing to build on the great legacy that is Kansas State football. And Kansas State's got a tremendous tradition here uh, built by Coach Schneider, and we're trying to continue to build upon that legacy. Uh, ben Newman's a guy that we've brought in here a, a couple of times as a, as a performance coach, motivational speaker that the guys have really uh, enjoyed. And, um, and, and that's one of Ben's uh, models of, of pound the stone that the guys have really uh, tapped into and, and we'll continue to, to do that. And we'll continue to find new ways to, to motivate guys and find new ways to uh, get guys to believe in, in, in the new era of Kansas State football.